Greetings, chess fans. Welcome to Chess Exercise 101. I'm your host, TC, from Bloomfontein, South Africa. And if you're a good hacker, I've already given you the head start. In this video, I'm going to be attempting to analyze the chess game going on between Magnus Carlsen and Ian Nipomnishi. Um, Magnus Carlsen is the current reigning world champion. He's been dominating the chess board for over a decade now. And Nipomnishi is the only player that has a positive score against Magnus Carlsen. So this game by no chance is an easy game. And yeah, I'm gonna try my best not to butcher this. So here, Magnus Carlsen plays one e4, already um, signaling that he wants the long grind in this game because Nippon Miyashi is very good with um, sharp positions and he plays very fast. So Nippon plays knight to f6, um, just again holding off his development of this pawn because yeah, in this variation, you get to like ask white what you want to do first and then you hold off your plans. So you don't want to give away what you want to do. And then we see here, Magnus Carlsen also uh, delays whatever that he wants to do. He plays the standard uh, knight f3. And then Nepon Nashi goes to the center with his d5 pawn push. Here, Magnus Carlsen is attempting to finchetto his bishop. So this bishop one day is going to reign in this diagonal. So that's the whole idea of this. Okay. So Nepon satisfies his center. Magnus goes for it. This is all standard, just moves. And then Magnus Carlsen. Uh, Carlson castles. Oh wow, such a tank system. He castles. Um, here he wants to keep his king safe. Uh, Nepo follows suit because if your king is safe, then you are able to play proper chess. And then here, this move, um, it's not been played in top level chess, like in serious games. So here, Magnus Carlson is trying to catch Nepo Nechi by surprise. Um, he's attempting to, he, wanna, he wants to put this bishop there and also control this diagonal. One day when this pawn is no longer here, this diagonal is gonna, this bishop is gonna be controlling this board. So he will be having this other bishop um, controlling the other diagonal. So yeah, I think Nepo paused, uh, paused for a bit just to analyze what is going on here because not so many people play this. Um, so brainmasters, they analyze every move. They know what's going to happen in most likely 30 moves from now. And if you get a game because of nowadays, there's like engine analysis, you know, you can play the whole game uh, already booked up where you know exactly what's going to happen. It's the whole thing now. It's all, it's all about trying to catch your opponent off guard. And here, Magnus plays a move that's very rare. Let's see how Nepo responds. Nepo fights for the center. He pushes his pawn. Here, Magnus Carlsen takes. Uh, that's also like another such sort of a bit of a surprise. And then he takes back with the bishop. Magnus Carlsen pushes his uh, C pawn, uh, challenging the center because he wants to free this bishop's scope. And he has already done that. So here, um, you can either exchange the queens, uh, but no one wants to, like, this will be like a very boring game if you exchange the queens that early. So here, okay, Magnus Carlsen uh, tucks away his queen. Nepo, uh, like, cements his bishop. Then the knight is deployed. Here, Magnus Carlsen has not taken the pawn. This is quite surprising because, like, um, he had an opportunity to take this pawn, but he's like, you know what? You, you can have the extra pawn. It's fine. And one thing that Magnus has been doing in this um, championship match is that he's been giving away pawns. In Grandmaster level, you want to keep your pawns. Like one pawn can win the game for like super grandmasters. With our level, you can still get away with, you know, a few lost pawns here and there, but a pawn is crucial. So here Magnus Carlsen again gives away the pawn. He's not interested in taking the pawn. He's keen for um, rapid development. So finally, he takes a pawn since Nepo doesn't want it. And then Nepo tries to dislodge the knight. 
the knight goes to a square, like a central square, where it can be exchanged with other knights, but Nepo threatens the queen. He doesn't want to have anything to do with that, right? The queen hides. So, you know, like the queen is the best piece, but like it's also the most fragile piece on the board. So whatever moves that your opponent makes against your, your queen, you have to react to it because if you lose your queen, it's very easy to lose the game. So here, uh, Magnus is annoyed by this knight. He doesn't want this knight to hang around because it's controlling the square, it's controlling the square. You know, it can also potentially, if there's something here, take. So you don't want your knight um, in, in your premises because yeah, it, it will give you trouble. Just look at that. So now Magnus Carlsen is like, no, I don't want that knight here. Let's go. Okay. Now Magnus Carlsen doesn't want to exchange the knight anymore. He realizes that this bishop, this bishop is just powerful hanging out here. He would rather exchange his knight for the bishop. Uh, Nepal realizes that no, my bishop is good. I don't want anything to do with that. So here, um, again, now Magnus is asking the questions and look at these guys. This is very instructive. The pieces are no longer, except, well, except for this um, rook, they are no longer on the original squares. They've been developed. So meaning if you develop uh, your pieces, it, it helps for you to coordinate and uh, win the game. If your pieces are not developed, you'll be stranded, you won't be able to maneuver and most likely you'll never win the game because your army. So what the crucial thing in chess is that you want to get your army involved. You want to get every piece. Every piece has to have a function. It has to serve a purpose and you always want to improve your piece. If it's not in a good square, improve it. So here, Nepo put the question to the knight saying, you know what, I want to take this knight. I want to see how you're going to react because the whole game of this, these are like the very best chess players. They want to attempt to like slowly but surely break away your armor. That's the whole point of this. Chess is not about like check, check, check the king, check the king, and then you win the game. Yeah, you can win some games with that when you're playing against lower rated players. But if you're playing at the at the top, at the very top, you need to have a strategy. You need to stick to what works. And yeah. So now, okay, Nepal's like, I'm gonna ignore that. I wanna improve my rook. I want this open file because rooks belong on open file. Uh, Magnus here takes, and then here Nepo is, for, uh, is now faces the question, does he take with his pawn? Does he take with the queen? If he takes with um, like the queen here, and then Magnus exchanges the queen, this might just be one of those um, games where you can easily grind into a draw. So, and here it also, Magnus is probing like, what are your intentions? Do you want to play for a win? Do you want to play for a draw? So now uh, Nepo decides, you know what? Okay, I think I'm already developed. My bishops are good. Um, my knight can be improved, but I like where everything is now. I'm gonna take with the pawn. So here now, this is the first indication that Nepo is not just playing for a draw. He wants something out of this game because they've drawn their last five games. And by no means does that mean that um, well, you know, they're just during their games it's because they're playing very accurate moves. And there's like, there, there hasn't been any blunder or any major blunder that has been made in the game. So here now, um, Magnus is like, okay, I'm also going to improve my, my rook. I'm going to put it on the C file since it's open. You've already claimed the D file. How about I also claim the C file for myself? And then now, uh, Nepo comes with a knight. Once start to start, once you start to ask questions, targeting this knight, um, and also by that decentralizing his knight. Now this knight is controlling this square, it's controlling the square, uh, the square, it's controlling here. I think in the business we call this an octonite. Oh, why did I point to the square? <laughs> right. So yeah, it's an octonite. It's powerful way it is. Like that's where you want to put your knights in a chess game. Magnus takes because he realizes, no, that knight is too powerful. And then here, Nepo takes. Um, so you see, he's putting the question to the queen. Where are you going to run off to? 
So Magnus tucks his queen to a2. Then in, in all the thing, Keto moves. You don't want white to own this bishop. So in Finketo, if you can exchange your light square uh, bishop for your opponent's bishop, do it because this is the whole point of this opening that he wants to control this diagonal. So you don't want to let that, um, you don't want to give that power to your opponent. So Nepo exchanges, okay, Magnus is supposed to take, he checks, and then he's just dancing around a bit. So now here, the crucial um, thing about this position is that black is actually better here. And so far, white's plan is not clear on what he wants to do. So Magnus, okay, uh, puts his queen in front of the, of the rook. Nepo just improves his pawn, uh, some maneuvering. And also by this time, the, the blocks are running low. They've already started thinking a lot in this game. Yeah, okay, he improves his king because you, you don't want to attack without improving your king. And then it took Magnus almost last 20, 20 minutes to play this rook move because he's trying to look for ideas uh, of how things will transpire. I think he's anticipating that Nepo might play um, rook to c8 and then he's fairly confident that he can hold this position and try to probe it because Black's position right now looks amazing. I think if all the grandmasters that were asked uh, during this game, which um, which pieces will they take? Uh, they were saying they will take Black because the king is safe. There isn't much going on there. Um, Magnus Carlsen looks like he's somewhat passive, but these are very like small margins, small margins. So here now, okay, everyone was running to see this move, rook c8, and now Magnus has a choice. He can either um, tuck away his queen and uh, play very passively or, you know, not indicate whether he's playing for a win in this game anymore, or he can exchange the queen. And this is like a very dynamic play. Like this already tells us that this game is not going to end in a draw somewhat it indicates that there's an imbalance so in a chess match you want to have imbalances and the more the imbalances uh, favor you the most likely you will be to win that game so now Magnus is running out of time he's thinking and then he's like okay I'm taking so he's he set this queen for two rooks well in the business for grandmasters this is like a normal day <laughs> I can only count a few times where I've actually sacked my my queen. Not blundered, by the way. Sack my queen and then still win the game because it's still scary. So the thing is that the queen is worth nine points. The rooks are worth five each, so you have ten. And then um, I says like for you have an extra piece, but then it's just like fine, fine margins. Your rooks are only powerful when they're connected together. And as you can see here, Magnus rooks are not connected. This one is on its own lane. So he has to waste a couple of moves here uh, to get coordinated. But then again, though it's very dangerous, um, there isn't an immediate win for, for Nepal. But everyone here, the commentators, grandmasters, and coaches, they were like indicating that you know what black is doing fine uh, black is gonna i think he's playing for a win magnus carlson needs to defend for his life here and you will see some resilience so here now the first good move is to centralize your pin so in an end game when the pieces um taken off the board centralizing your queen um is the way to go because now it controls the chess board in plenty direction like it can move in any direction like so potentially these um this like is supposedly a winning move for for napo but let's see what happens in the game here magnus say okay uh, i have a way to protect the pawn and another mo chess move or chess engine suggestion was that do not take the pawn just advance your pawn because now this pawn is a weakness so now white is tied to finding a good way to um, save this pawn. So you don't want to be playing for a draw uh, with white. You want to play for a win. But now with the position, 
Magnus Carlsen said it has to find ways. And with time running out, your accuracy, yeah, it just goes down drastically. But if you're a world, if you're the world chess champion, obviously it won't just be me. Here again, uh, Napo was criticized for a hasty play. He's some is the one guy that plays very fast, is very sharp. But here he should have like tried to. He still had like 27 minutes, or before he played this move, he still had like 30 minutes on the board. The Magnus Carlsen only left with nine minutes, so he could have maybe tried to search for a better variation. But the position is complex. There's no clear cut win for for Black. So here yeah, Magnus also is running is running out of time. He plays H4, which in a long run it helps him. But in this context, because I think what was missed here, Nepo in the previous move should have played uh, Bishop B2. You know, attempting to want to probe questions about this pawn and then the queen taking the knight, you know, all sorts of complications that could have led him to win because he has the, what's his, queen side upon majority. So this could have been like a different ending for him had he gone for that, but he missed that because he was trying to put Magnus, um, causes, like put him on time pressure. And then here he plays another move which has nothing to do with the position. So even at Grandmaster level, uh, you can easily miss some things if you're playing for time. Okay, Magnus Carlsen takes the, the queen to the, to the side, which is not ideal as well, but he doesn't have much time. You know, in three minutes, he has to play like nine moves. So the thing is that um, they are given two hours to play the first 40 moves. And then when they reach move 40, they get an extra uh, 30 minutes, still no, still no increment. And then if they reach move 60, they get uh, 50. 15 minutes with 30 seconds increment after for the rest of the game. So here now, Napo plays the move, but it's already a little bit too late because Magnus Carlsen has somewhat solved these issues. His king is safe. There's not, there's not there are no immediate checks. Yeah. Okay. Napo, uh, Magnus tries to dislodge the queen. Where do you want to go? He's also playing for time here. So now, okay, he still keeps an eye on the uh, was it that was the best square for the for the queen to go and then here it's deemed as an, an a mistake or inaccuracy no one understands what was his thought process here why but he wants to keep things checked on the uh or rather exchange yeah he's keen to exchange the the rook for the bishop and then he believes that he can hold uh, that somehow with a rook and a knight so nepo takes Magnus takes, and then the rook is challenged. He moves back. So here again, uh, this was a bit of a mistake or inaccuracy, but still, it's a very like fine margin. This and these guys are now left with um, like the one is left with three minutes, the other one is left with two minutes. So um, it's it's critical time pressure. Um, like it's critical. So now Magnus, okay, he takes back his rook. He wants to defend his uh, second rank. Again, here Nepo, like playing, this was not the accurate move. Um, it wasn't the best move in the position. So now Magnus is coordinated. His rooks are connected. He has solved his um, issues. And then he's like two moves away to reaching um, what's his time control. Nepo plays. Okay, I'm just gonna. So here now they're just maneuvering, you know, attacking the knight. Okay, takes, and here you want to look out for, like, uh, just tactics in the end games. Magnus Carlsen takes that, and by that move he reaches um, uh, time control. So now, yeah, like again, this is another phase of the game, where the issue, Black has a passed pawn. The good thing is that Magnus has rooks that are connected, so it's not easy to challenge this. So now he needs to just get his king safe and everything coordinated. But this still, the engine is saying that this is a draw because with it's going to take precise play for them to, or says, to make anything out, out of this game. So technically, this is a draw, but this is Magnus Carlsen playing. 
he puts his rook um, in the C file, controlling the C file. Okay, they do some maneuvering, takes away. Here, Nepo moves his pawn. The pawn is protected by the bishop, can't do much, but they still can pass the A2 square. So the A2 square is where like Magnus is holding his fort. Now he gets a chance to play with his knight, uh, the maneuver. So now Magnus wants to win the pawn, so that's crucial. He's threatening to do that. Now the king moves. And then again, yeah, trying to squeeze something. So we know Magnus for like squeezing water out of a rock. And this looks like it's gonna be, gonna be one of those games. The bishop goes, he can't really take. The king, you know, we wanna try to find the moves. So now the knight is coming into the frame so that it can attack this uh, pawn. So this pawn eventually is going to fall. Let's see how it goes. It falls. Then the knight jumps and it's protected. Okay, the king goes back. There's not much to do. You know, they waste some moves a bit because also again, uh, they're low on time. They need to reach move 60. Here, Magnus decides like, you know what? Let me take, um, let me take the pawn. Normally, I wouldn't have done that because I'm like, I have two rooks, you know, here's a queen. No, that looks scary. So, but here, the whole idea is that Magnus says, I would rather play with a rook and a knight against the queen. It's fine. So, here, Napa is an in between move. Um, he can take this pawn because um, this pawn is pinned, he can't take back. And he does that, takes. So, now Magnus has to find the six square for the king. He finds g1. Yeah, and then again, now the queen has to be centralized. So now you don't have the luxury to take. Okay, so here you can't take the, <laughs> for those who didn't see, you can't take the rook because you're under attack, but you're just losing on the spot. Now start to protect, start to maneuver. So this game goes for a bit of a move. I'm just gonna fast forward. Um, Again, now the whole game is revolving around this. So black has a threat of saying that your pawn is it's on the dark square, right? And the bishop can attack it. And uh, he just wants to get the queen to attack this pawn. Magnus Carlsen's aim is to try and push these pawns up the board, but then he has to deal with the threat of checks and everything. So um, he has moved like this, uh, like, you know, if this um, rook is not here, we can attempt to get into the position, take this pawn, push this pawn in order to queen. So those are like long-term ideas that are happening. So now he has to dance around, still dancing. So here yeah, again, um, this, I think Magnus has this move check where the king obviously needs to move to this square because if it moves this side, we just move and then it's check. We can easily get a checkmate going. So now Nepo has to be careful as well because Nepo is playing for a draw here, but Magnus, um, he, I think he knows that he has a draw with accurate play, he can win the game. So it's all about trying and probing and seeing if your opponent will crack. Okay, uh, there's nothing much that Nepo can do. So here now, uh, because um, he was threatening to like queen to E thingy, uh, sorry about that into e1 and most probably win this knight so but magnus is not going to allow that he plays his uh to c1 and i think it was judith folger the i think the greatest female chess player of all time which was saying like this rook belonged on the c file to stop anything that the queen is doing so black here although he was defending but he also had threats so it was, it was not easy for white to win this game so now again, the bishop goes back. So Magnus is, this is all about just maneuvering your pieces. Sometimes it looks as if you're doing nothing in you, you know, as you attempt to, to confuse your opponent, all right? So here now, it seems like, okay, first thing, okay? Seems like now Magnus has found a way to win this pawn cleanly, right? He goes, he chases the bishop. So here he was also playing for time. So he was trying to reach uh, or trying to gain some, I think he had 18 seconds when he played that move or something. And then he was trying just to gain time on the clock. Takes the pawn, the queen can't really do anything. He moves closer. And then look at that move. Oh, goodness me. 
So now he decides, you know what, I'm just going to sacrifice my, my rook here and take the pawn. So queen is, uh, the king has to take, check, the bishop is falling, check. So now we have reached another phase of the game where they now need, Nepo needs to, this is the draw. I think even the chess base um, analysis shows that this is a draw, but black has to play so accurately in order to hold this draw. So here we start seeing another saga. So now the whole game revolves in white trying to get his pawns up the board and protecting the uh, protecting the, the king. But white here has moves like that where he can put his queen on h1, eventually check, take this pawn if this, um, what do you call, if this knight is not here. So yeah, there's still a lot going on. We're gonna revolve, just rotate around. Magnus is going to check, trying to check where is everything going to unfold. And then here now, okay, so Magnus finds a new defending idea where it's like it's trying. It's almost like reputation. And you also have to keep in mind that um, if a position is repeated three times the draw, so he has to, in his head, with little time, think of the different squares where his, his um, pieces have been and then avoid that as well. So now he gains some time on the clock so that he can think a bit, uh, check, check. Okay, he's trying to employ a different strategy. And then here he gets to find a new form. So now the knight goes to G2, uh, G1 rather, sorry. So now this is like the beginning of the end for Nepal Nechi. So now Magnus Carlsen, like, okay, I'm controlling this. I'm gonna cheat you a bit. I'm gonna, you know, I want to push my e pawn. I'm gonna put my knight there. So this knight now, look at that. It's protecting this pawn. It's protecting this pawn, and also means that the the, the queen cannot check um, the king here. So okay, he pushes the pawn, and there's a 50 move rule where if no pawns have been moved or there's no captures going on and the like no point captures that occurred uh the game um is drawn in 50 moves so now this pawn push resets the 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 counter okay magnus tries to probe okay naples defending resiliently and now here magnus takes then takes so now again the new frame is coming to to unfold and mind you, at this time, these guys have played for over seven hours, almost going to eight hours. So you're already tired. You've been at the board for such a long time. You haven't ate. Um, who says yeah, you can't lose weight while he's playing chess? <laughs> so now it's just maneuvering of pieces, trying to get your, your king um, safe without checks. So Magnus is doing that brilliantly because we know that his end games strategies are brilliant. Uh, here he finds these moves. So now the whole idea is just to get these points are gonna go up. I think Napo by this time is realizing that white made progress. So the the king here is just gonna get into this. It's gonna go up. It's gonna go up. Match with the pawns. Everything is covered here. So the the move that Napo needed to find here, I believe it was uh, pin to b1 because. He has a grip on this diagonal, so it was pin to b1, or the other move was um, pin to c2. That that this gave him chances to defend this. As long as he's in this um, diagonal, it's not going to be easy for white to to progress. So that can still be a draw. But now, okay, he checks. And then uh, this was the beginning of the end. We made the mistake there. Magnus Carlsen just pushes his king. That king is going up. He checks, and then the knight defends. So here also, now, this is the first indication that um, Nepo is feeling the pressure. Here, Magnus does not need to defend this rook because he can just, uh, Nepo can just, just do that. Nepo can take, and then, okay. Um, so he doesn't need to, Magnus does not need to put this rook to safety. This is an accurate move recommended by the chess engine. So even if Magnus was to take here, uh, let's say if he takes, there's this, you know, check, and then 
yeah, it's uh, most probably that, 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 and then, yeah, uh, here, the white is winning. There's no way that you're gonna stop that. You're gonna be able to stop that pawn. So, but then here, Magnus doesn't have much moves left. Uh, Nepo, uh, I mean, sorry, Nepo doesn't have that much moves left. And Magnus continues going forward and is indicating that I'm winning. I'm winning this game. Uh, he's getting his pieces together. The, uh, the queen has to move. And this is where, uh, I think it was in this position that Nepo resigned. He resigned because there's nothing much to do. You can't stop these pawns. They're going to queen. So for instance, if um, Nepo checks Magnus, he's just gonna move up the board. He's just gonna, the king is just gonna move up the board. This didn't happen in the game because it was thingy and then it's gonna get there. And eventually uh, it's gonna push his pawn. It's gonna get a new queen. So this is lights out for Nepo. So game six goes to Magnus. They still have eight games to play. Uh, we're just wondering how Nepo is going to respond to this. Um, it was a very good grind by Magnus Carlsen, the game that broke the record. I think it had 136 moves. Uh, the previous record was 124 moves in the World Chess Championship. So it was, in, it was nice just seeing how grinding your position out. Because sometimes tactics, if your opponent does not fall for your tactics, you have to find other means of winning. Okay, I really enjoyed just sharing this game with you. Hopefully, I'll catch you again in the next.